Hey guys, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Speakeasy Podcast, where we talk about the behind the scenes of what it is to be the speaker and the author. So I know you saw the title for today's episode, and it's literally preparing today for what you want to happen tomorrow, that part, right? And as we're preparing for this whole, you know, ball drop, we're preparing for this whole, you know, you're about to see all the messages, new year, new me. (laughs) You're about to see all the new year's resolutions. As we're preparing for that, there's this disconnect where we think that we can't get started until January 1st. That part. (laughs) And that is so much further from the truth. And so today's episode, I have an amazing guest with me. Hello, Vanessa. Hello. Thank you for having me. (laughs) I'm super excited because her book is the exact title that I said to you for today's episode. Why? Because sometimes we have to get into a mindset. We have to do um, a shift completely in order for us to understand that I don't have to wait until the first, I don't have to wait until next month, next week. I can get started right. today. Today, mm-hmm. today, today, today. Right. <laughs> so I'm super excited about that. And who am I? I'm, I'm your host, duh. <laughs> Alfie Lee Spelzer, the voice coach, professional speaker, certified life coach, Amazon bestselling author and podcaster. Guys, we are looking forward to doing some amazing things and talking about some awesome things today. But first, let's start. Vanessa, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, and then we'll dive into today's topic. Like she said, my name is Vanessa Fleeton. I'm an author and speaker. I'm a Washingtonian. I moved to Maryland when I was 13, so I'm still Southeast girl at, 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 at heart. <laughs> um, graduated from Bowie State and PG Community College. Worked for the government for almost 30 years, and I stepped out on faith four years ago, December 31st, to pursue my dreams. So I'm, all, I'm definitely um, I'm passionate about pursuing your purpose, pursuing your dreams. That is my that's my thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. And so that, that part is super amazing. So let's, let's get started. Let's dive right in. Is that your latest book has eight steps when it comes to, you know, preparing today for the tomorrow that you really want to have. And I want to say to, you know, our audience, a lot of you are on different levels and different stages of this journey called entrepreneurship, this journey called becoming a a paid speaker, this journey called being a successful author. And so when telling them, you know, okay, maybe it's time for a shift and you need to start preparing today for that shift that you want to happen. What's that number one thing? What's that first thing that you tell them to do? Uh, Let me see. I'm trying to pick between the eight steps. Um, well, I think the first chapter, I think I started it as finances because that is critical. Anything that you want to do, whether it's business, whether it's lose weight, get healthier, um, education, travel, whatever you decide that you want to do, it's going to take finances and the finances start in your mind and then it goes into the behavior. So you got to get your finances under control before you do anything. It's not how much you make, it's how much you keep, it's how much you save. It's the relationship you have with your money. Sometimes we got better relationships with everything else out here with friends, neighbors, family, but we don't have a relationship with our money. We're all lost when it comes to that. So I'm sitting here smiling like real big only because I know that last, well, this year, in January, I did something with one of my um, one of my communities online, where I did you know a a money challenge, a money talk challenge, because I said you know we've had horrible conversations about money, we've had horrible uh, comments made about money. Our relationships with money is just just <laughs> despicable, terrible, um, and a lot of it is because of our childhood and, and what we grew up in and they, mm-hmm. they didn't talk about money. And so, you know, that's great that you would say to start in that area because I even did a post and I know a lot of, you know, about red table talk with Jada Pinkett Smith. And yes. I saw it today. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I put a, I put a question in there and I said, do you have money conversations with your children? And you know, some, I was thinking there would be a lot of yeses and no's and, when I tell you the responses ran the gambit, 
people were like, well, why am I talking to them about the bills? And this, <laughs> I didn't about the bills. <laughs> right. But immediately when you think finances, some people, that's exact, that's where their mind goes. But that's not the only part of finance. Right. And so, right. yeah, when you're deciding that, you know what, I'm going to make this happen next year, you don't want to do it and put yourself into a bigger hole. Right. You don't want to do it and put yourself in debt. You want to have a plan. You want to have a strategy. Right. Right. And if you don't learn it at home, because my mom is a shopaholic and I was talking to a young lady the other day, she sees something she wants and she just buy it. So I didn't learn it at home. I think, I don't know if it was a gift passed down through somebody in the family, but it was definitely a gift from God. I, I know that without, without a shadow of a doubt. But if we don't learn it at home, where do we learn it? Now, I don't know if they put it into the school nowadays, because I went to board of education for DC, for Maryland, and I know some of the schools have it. I don't know about our PG community um, PG public schools. I don't know if they have it, but it's like, if you don't learn it at home, if you don't learn it in school, where else are you going to learn it? I took geometry and I almost cry every single day and I haven't used that a day in my life. So I'm like, why are you wasting my time as a teenager? Why are you wasting my time? You know, I need to learn life skills. How do I manage a house? How do I manage a car? How do, life skills. Now, if you're going into geometry, if you're going in to be a scientist or whatever, I don't know what you're going to need it for, then you may need to know it. But other than that, you all have wasted our times. And when we get out here, we don't know how to handle life. So money is so important. I'm like, it's not necessarily about bills because we're conditioned that way. And, and it's kind of like a negative thing when it comes to money. But money is not negative. Money can be positive. And that's why I was put here on this earth for our enjoyment as well as for our needs every day. You know, that that literally is... <laughs> I have four teenagers and so I'm in Maryland as well uh -huh. and I, I look at the education that they're getting and I compare it to what other schools and other areas and other states are getting especially where we came from because we came from Philadelphia Philadelphia school district right now are horrific and so are we really are we really preparing them today for the future that not only they want to have but that we want to have because right. They're going to be our next politicians. They're going to be our next president. They're going to, be, we got to understand this. So are we really preparing them today for the future that they want to have, but also the future that we want to have? Right. Guess what? When we're, you know, thinking about retirement and thinking about, um, you know, nursing homes and things like that for, right. our, <laughs> uh, the, when we're thinking about those things, these are going to be the ones in position to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if, if with finance if they can't handle finance now what are we going to look up, look like when, it, <laughs> when they're in the White House and they're, they're oh, in the government and, and now we really listen <laughs> right. you, better, you better get it straight I'm telling you and I don't know if they still do when you go to college where they have you to sign up for credit cards and you don't have a job you don't have an income so who's going to pay that be your parents I mean, what, what are you going to do? I didn't, I wasn't exposed to that because I lived on campus, but still, I'm just like, how are you, you setting them up to fail? What, we got to get that right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, we don't, and we don't have those conversations. Right. And so even if this is you saying that you want to go back to school, even if this is you saying that you want to start a business, even if this is you saying next year, I want to be a five figure earning speaker. Okay. So what does that mean investment wise that you're going to have to invest in this business and invest in yourself for you to get to that point, that part, because there is going to be a financial investment, a time investment. There's going to be a commitment that you have to make to yourself to really see this through to the end. So I definitely understand that through and through. Now, with that being said, the finances, huge, huge piece. When putting together the book for preparing today, what was your inspiration for it? Like, where did it come from? Was it something that you were like, oh, you know, you had been studying it or were you looking, were you looking around and going, okay, something's got to give. Let's get on it. Um, so you said when I was thinking about that piece, you said, where did that come from? Because I see and I hear a lot of people talk about money. And like I said, I've been frugal all my life. 
So I think once I retired, I realized how that played a major role in me being able to retire at 46. There's no way I would be able to retire from a government at 46 if my finances wasn't straight from age 16. I started working when I was 16. So I've been in the workforce 30 years. That's selling my age. But hey, I'll be 50 next month. I don't care. <laughs> so I will always hear people talk about their money and I would see what my mom going through. And I'm like, okay, this is huge. Even now, I, you know, I saved. I did, you know, put money in my CDs, my retirement account. My, you know, even now I'm seeing the account dwindle. But because I'm a person of faith, I know that plays a part as well. So that's part um, of the chapter in my book talking about finances and faith. And so without that money piece, it's like I wouldn't be able to travel. I wouldn't be able to enjoy my life. I wouldn't be able to um, have a business, sustain myself. And so I just see the state of the world. And I'm like, you know what? I've got to start. It was hard to narrow down to what step would be number one. But I was like, if we get it in our mind that we can handle our finances right, we can do anything else in the world. We can sew, we can, if we're a tither, if we want to give to the homeless. Uh, it's just so important to get that together because the future generation, like you said, our children, um, the politicians, I mean, everybody is going to be leaning towards um, a, a great financial future. So if you start off wrong, then somebody is going to be in trouble. A lot of somebody's is going to be in trouble if you don't get that piece together. So I could just see what people was going through. Like I said, my mom and just hearing people talk about it. Well, how can I do this with money? And then people have to retire and go back to work because of money. So it's just so much. And it's not money is evil. It's the love of money and it's the way we handle our money. So that's why I started there. That's interesting as well, because I know that a lot of times we do have people that will go out and, move towards, you know, living their dream, move towards really living this great life as, as you know, now as little do I would put it, living our best life, best life, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they move towards it and then they end up having to go back to a job and they, that financial piece is always the root of it. Um, it's, you know, that mindset that I was living paycheck to paycheck and then I go into business for myself and I'm li living client to client. Right. And we got to get off that hamster wheel and realize that there's something greater. There's investments. There's other things that we can do that will help us to be able to live out our dream. Right. And it's definitely, you definitely have to plan it. You definitely have to plan. You can't just up in one day decide, oh, I'm just going to start a business. Oh, I'm just going to leave my job. Oh, I'm just, you, you can't just, that's not an overnight thing because I would have been gone years ago. But I did start writing a book and start my business a year before I came out of the government. So that helped. But like I said, because I'm frugal, because I know how to manage my money, um, and because I just believe God's going to take care of me, he's not going to leave me out there, then I know I'm going to make it. But it's a lot of preparation. It's not an overnight thing. You, you've got to really know what you're doing. And so knowing that piece of it, let's look at this journey of what that would mean. Somebody without that, all heck is going to break loose. Right. Somebody with that, all heck is going to break loose, but you'll be a little more prepared for it. And I think that's the piece that, you know, people are sometimes missing because they're like, well, I don't feel like sitting down and writing out the plan. I don't feel like sitting down and, and writing in a whole bunch of notebooks. And, and let's, let's talk about the nasty B word that nobody wants to discuss, budgets. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't say that, girl. That's a curse word. Don't say that. Don't, don't say that B word. Folks will cuss you out. That is the nasty B word that nobody wants to say. Oh, you got a potty mouth. Why are you talking about this soap? But budgeting really has, um, it's helped me a lot. Yes. I know that for me, as a single mother of four teenagers, being able to leave my job, being able to, you know, pay off my debt, being able to do all of the things that I've been able to do in just two years would not have happened at all. It wouldn't even come close to happening if right. I did not have a budget. And that was even with me being lax on my budget, not being 100%, because there's some people that are on, when they do their budget, you'd be like, <laughs> 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 like, man, I felt like I was in trouble. <laughs> make you want to cry and be like, I'm just gonna go ahead and start crying. I'm just gonna go ahead and fall I out. Give you an extra dollar because that, that budget <laughs> was tight. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, you can't be too tight. You got because one thing I had to learn, I had to enjoy myself. I work, 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 went to school, 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 part time, part time. And it's like I had to learn how to enjoy myself. Even now, it's like Vanessa, you know, somebody that told me the other day, you have worked hard, you have saved, you have sacrificed, you put money away. If this is a rainy day, you're gonna have to dip into that rainy day fund. Now for my 401k, those who know about TSP, that's the government term, 401k. If you dip in that, you're going to pay a penalty and you're going to be taxed. So it's like, okay, do I want to leave that money for somebody else to enjoy? Because life is short. Just to be honest, life is short. Or do I want to enjoy it while I'm here? So if it starts raining, I may need to get that money out, but I'm so used to holding on. I'm so used to paying bills. I'm so, it's like you got to enjoy yourself. So for my 50th in January, know that I'm taking a cruise and I'm going to work it out some kind of way because I ain't got it like that. But we're going to cruise and just so happen an incident, an accident happened and I'll get back on track, but an accident happened and somebody had texted me and called me while I was getting some tests done and they said somebody ran into your car. And I was like, oh my gosh, me in this car, me in this car. She's been with me 14 years, so I ain't going to talk about her too bad because I need her to do me right. I need her to do me right. So, so the lady was like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. So I said, ma'am, don't worry, don't worry. She tore her car up worse than mine because cars are just, they're not made of anything nowadays. And so I went to the insurance company that next day. Girl, I got that check. I said, I'm not going to worry about the cosmetics because she may be banged and bruised up, but she take a lick and keep on ticket just like her owner. So that, that amount was almost the exact amount I needed for my cruise and for my airfare. So don't tell me that when you faithful that he would not come through. That wasn't a coincidence. That just happened not too long ago. And, and the trip is in, in January. So you got to enjoy life, but you got to sacrifice first and you got to save first. You can't just be out there doing any and everything, everything you see you want it. And I know the holidays coming up, y'all. Look, like she said, a budget. If you want to call it a spending plan to feel better, call it what you want to call it. <laughs> but you're going to need a holiday. But I don't do holiday Christmas shopping. If I want to get something for somebody, I'll get it because it's not your birthday. So I'm not going to buy you a gift and it's not your birthday. So definitely you need a spending plan for your holiday spending. And come the first of the year, you don't want to be laid out, going crazy, losing your mind on alcohol, on drugs, because now you don't know what to do because now you have so much debt. Mm, and that comes at, oh my goodness, it happens more times than it should. I know we look at, um, we look at Will Smith. He just celebrated his big 5-0. Right. And he hella jumped. Hey, I'm, I was like, oh my goodness, you're jumping out of a helicopter? That's what oh. we're going to do on Earth. <laughs> 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 Is that what we're going to do on <laughs> But y- you, you have to look at it. And even when you listen to, you know, the Red Table Talk, and you listen to Jada, and you listen to the conversations that they have about, you know, what they've been through. They yeah. have really gone through a lot. Now we're looking at all of this stuff now, even with, you know, him doing his own movies and all of that. We're looking at all of this stuff on this end and going, oh my goodness, Will is doing amazing. And then we think about it. Well, Will has been doing this for about 30 years. Right. And I want to be on top in five years. I'm, I'm ready to live. Like you said, I'm ready to be up there. Everybody know me. I'm going to run around five years. Come on now. Come on, let's stop it. I'm like, you ain't even put your time in yet. <laughs> Five years in, you better stop it. You better stop. <laughs> 30 years in the workforce with somebody else. So I can't count that. Five years Listen. in for me. I'm exactly. Not and it's so interesting because when we're at the job, oh, we creative at the job. We we come up with all types of ideas and all of these different opportunities. We we you know because it's work smarter, not harder. So we using our mind and coming up with all types. And then when it comes to us working our business and living our dreams, man, we can't think of nothing. <laughs> right, right. And but you know one thing, they took so much out of me that I can say that I can say the energy. The, the effort, the patch, just everything that I went through, all the stress with them. Now, when it comes to my business, it's going to take me a while to get my mind back right, to get my body back right. To, you know, I'm, I'm older now. I'm, it, it's going to take a while because I gave them everything I had. So that's why one reason why I wanted to retire early enough to be able to enjoy my life enjoy my business get you know we don't have so much time you don't know how much time you have so at least if you're 50 60 you know you're hoping you're gonna have a little while left but you want to have you want to get it done when you have that energy and that passion so now I'm having a backtrack 
and get that energy back and get that mindset back and get my passion back because they sent me through, I went through so much stress and I think my body remembers that. And so now I'm trying to get myself together so I can give myself and my business and the people that I inspire, I can give them more than I ever gave a manager or I ever, ever gave a job, but it may take a minute. You know, that's interesting. I had a conversation with one of my clients and she just recently left her job. And it was so, you know, they, they, they tried to do the whole, it, I told her because I was able to leave my job the year before. And I told her, I said, there is a progression of things that will happen over the next few months. And she was like, oh, okay. She was like, you know, you know how you're like, somebody tells you something. You're like, oh, okay. I'll look out for it. And right. then as each thing happened, she came back to me and was like, coach. <laughs> she said, coach, I didn't coach. I said, yes, there's a mindset shift that you go through, but you also start to see things differently. You start to think about things differently. And then when you finally leave, man. Oh yeah. Man, you go through so many emotions. You go through so many things. You get up the same time because you, you're in that habit of having to go to work and, and the mindset. Even when you go out, it's just a different feeling. And right. you have to get into a habit of telling people what it is that you do. You have to get into a habit of telling people, no, you're not working a job. You work for yourself. You know right. people look at you strange when you say you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, and don't and don't retire before you're eighty years old because they just look at you like something's wrong with you. Like you got three eyes in the middle of your head. Yeah, exactly. reti you retired. Right. Who told you to do that? Right, you too young. Says who? The OPM book. Oh, I'm sorry, OPM. But <laughs> the, the the book, the manual. They they said I gotta wait until I'm a, I would have been over sixty something years old. Come on now. I was like, I ain't got sixty days, let alone sixty another twelve years to get these people. I, I yeah. can't do it. Come on. Okay. And so when living your dream and planning it out, you got to understand that I also have to plan for the emotion that's going to come with it. Because when I leave, I may not be able to jump right into dealing with clients and customers. Right. I may not be able to jump right into building this empire. There may be some time and some steps that I need to step back and take. And that's what I was letting her know that, okay, it's, it's, it's okay. You have to give yourself grace. Right. Because guess what? Everybody's going to handle it differently. So you have to give yourself grace. Don't allow yourself to be lax, but you have to give yourself grace because emotionally wise, listen, it's a lot. It's draining. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. And for me, I think, um, because I hated getting up early in the morning and I forced myself for some years. Now when I try to get up, it's hard. Cause I remember those days waking up and not wanting to call out of bed. Or add on top of that, me going through the emotional things that I deal with when it deal when it deals with the M word, girl, the M word, the other curse word, that menopause, girl. That's a whole other show. We had to do that later. <laughs> but that joker, it ain't no joke. So on top of me already not wanting to get him get out of bed because I remember all those years, and I just don't. You have to be self motivated when you work from home, work for yourself. And those emotions and those hormones and people think life after retirement, it's not always a bit of roses. It's not always sunshine. We go through some stuff, but it's worth it because we're doing it for ourselves and our legacy and other people that we touch. But it is no joke. So, you know, I get out, my body automatically gets something. It's like, I don't feel like getting out of bed. It's hard. And that's because I have to be reconditioned. I have to, you know, get that excitement. The weather's changing. You got to be careful with that. And I get my hormones together. But it's definitely a struggle. It's a challenge. Yeah, and people need to know that. You're going to go through something because it's not like anything you've ever known if you work for any number of years. So it's definitely a lot. I can see that through and through. I know that it was for me. And, you know, there may be somebody out there that says, oh, no, it was easy. Can I, can I tell y'all something? Come a little closer to the, <laughs> to whatever listening device you are hearing me on right now, you need to mom pluck them in the forehead because they are lying to you. <laughs> they right, told you that pull, this is Pull the ear a little bit. Put, tuck on the ear, little grandma thing. Yeah, you got to, you need to just go on and mom pluck them right <laughs> in the forehead and they deserve it every bit. <laughs> and because this is, that's where the planning comes in. We have to have this planning in order for us to make it an easier transition. And not only that, is now we got to be able to say, I need help. Right. Because, you know, asking for help on a job could get you fired. Can we be real? 
Oh my gosh. Don't and, and don't ask for training. Don't ask for training when it comes to helping. Oh my gosh. They they look at you like, help. What do you mean? Go over there, sit in the corner, get the computer and, and learn and figure it out. Everybody don't learn that way. So and even now it's hard. I'm learning to ask for help. I'm like, look, y'all, I need some, I'm going through something. I need some help in this area, that area, that area. And it just so happened the right people fall in place, but it may not be the people you think or the people you've been there for. So yeah. You got to ask that me. part. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people, you know, a lot of times if we're trying to reach a level of success, that means that we have to change our circle and it hurts because we don't want to leave anybody behind. We don't want to seem as if we're ch- we changed. But the reality is, is that changing your circle will put you into a different bracket when it comes to conversations. Right. And sometimes right. we need that those different conversations. We need conversations about what I'm going to invest in next, not conversations about, you know, well, how I'm going to get $5 for lunch on Friday. We need different conversations. It's not to right. say that they, you know, that they won't be around. It's not to say that they won't invest. It's not to say that they won't support. They very well, you very well may. But I need to be in some conversations that, you know, are, are taking me to a whole nother level. I, I get the opportunity um, with working with my business coach to listen to millionaires talk on the phone. And it's so funny because I always giggle. I'm silly. I'm super silly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always giggle because I'm just like, the conversation is just different. You're like, oh yeah, I'm opening my restaurant this weekend. Are you going to be able to come through? Yeah, I'm going to come through. I'll just take a flight. The conversation. It's <laughs> <laughs> a, a little different than I'm going to hop on a bus and go to Southeast. <laughs> And I can say exactly the conversation is, <laughs> and so it has allowed me to start having different conversations with people. You know, even with my children, it's allowed me to start having different conversations. Whereas at one point in time, for us, it was I don't have the money. I don't know how I'm gonna get the money. I don't have the money. I'm not gonna be able to do it because I don't have the money. Now it's okay. Well, when do you need the money? Mm-hmm. You have it. When do you need right. it? Right. And so it, 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 you know, you just shift in what it is that you say to other people and what you allow other people to say to you. Now, I always ask people this question in this wonderful journey. Has there been any blunders that you've come across? Yeah, well, let me tell you, <laughs> that's probably a whole nother book. <laughs> Vanessa's blunders. That's what a whole nother book. When I tell you it has not been easy, I don't know how it works for other people, but it was all from, from book one. It's always been a challenge. I met with this lady and she was trying to tell me this, that, and the other. And at the end, she told me she charged for consultation. Okay. Well, you got to tell me ahead of time. I sat in the parking lot. I cried. And because I don't drink or smoke, I went in and got some chocolate, two chocolate balls and walked around the store and ate my chocolate, felt a little better than after that. I got with a lady that was helping with the book and she was just, she had her own business and she was showing up late and it was this, it was that. And then the second book got somebody to help me. She's showing up late and, and we're in the middle now of going through something because she didn't give me what she promised and she really overcharged me and she over promised or whatever. But it just seemed like I'm, I always go through so much and it's like, why can't anything ever be easy? Why is it an issue? Whether it's paying for somebody you know, paying for something they don't want to deliver. And one thing I learned to never pay for anything and you don't have the product or you're not happy with it. Hey, as you go, they'll get the final win when you're happy and when it's done. So it's taught me some lessons, expensive lessons, but I've gone through different things. I'm like, why can this ever go smooth? Why is it always an issue? It is not easy and it's not for a person that give up easily it's definitely for a person i'm not a person that that quits it's not in my dna but every time i turn around it was something happening it was something going on with this that and the other and it's just like i have to i have a poem on my wall that says don't quit and i love that poem and you just have to be determined that i know what my purpose is and i know why i was put here and i have to continue regardless so all when all those little things happened everything was breaking loose here in the house stuff was happening with the car stuff was happening and i was like look this is whoa okay i'm a strong woman come on now (laughs) but this is a lot so in the business part yeah i've had some issues in dealing with people and trying to get photos done the photos aren't what you want them to be you to pay this money (laughs) 
I mean, that's a whole book. I can't even go into the whole, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a whole nother book. It's just always I'm something. laughing because hey. the first photo shoot, I told somebody, I, I, I yelled at my kids. I le- yelled at my family. Because, you know, the first time you do something, everybody's like, oh, my God, that's so cute. That's wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and then I look at my first photo shoot now, and my kids were like, yeah, Mom, <laughs> don't ever do that again. <laughs> That, that didn't look the best. And I'm like, you didn't tell me when I did it? Right. Right. Like, you didn't want to hurt your feet. Hurt my feelings. You got me out here looking crazy. Was it you? Was it the photographer or what? I think it was just, I think it was just me. Like okay. was one photo where I honestly look like the poster child for teen pregnancy. Like there's like the way my face is and it had the open space in the back. It looked like the number to Planned Parenthood should have been behind me. I'm so <laughs> And you wasn't expecting. And no. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. But still to me, photographers should they should be able to get you in your best light. They should be able to do more than just take pictures to me. Sure. And, so and I mean not- for me, it was because I didn't like pictures. So okay. it was like my first time, I was super nervous. So I was just like, well, you know, let's just whatever, let's just work this out. And so, you know, I mean, the pictures were really good. The pictures themselves were really good. But when I look back on it, I say, wow. But and I guess that's, I guess that's like a first for everybody. Everybody's first photo shoot really looks like, like their first photo shoot. <laughs> right. But then they they kind of photoshopped it. I mean, I don't do a lot of Photoshop. But in in that case, if it's like really bad, they could have photoshopped. They can they can take care of that. <laughs> it but was yeah, so funny though because I was just like oh that picture is just oh wow we're never using that so that's just going to be an arse <laughs> no just photoshop it they can slim it down girl you, what do you think the people do well, no, since know. then I've taken all types of pictures okay. I'm, I'm the type that I can't just do a pose and you take a picture I just got to do my own thing and you just say right <laughs> right Right, 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 right. You just yeah. said photos because it, it looks like this. if I try it that way. Yeah, and the thing is, when I came home that day, I did my own little photo shoot. Girl, I was rolling around on the floor. I had my locks all up in the air. I was doing my little thing. Why that photo shoot came out better than the professional one? And so now I'm using pictures from like years ago. I still kind of look the same, but I need a new new photo shoot. Yeah, so you're gonna go through some stuff. Yeah, it's it's yeah, most definitely. So I definitely have to agree with you there. It, it's, <laughs> And, and it's, you know, you, it's so funny because they tell you it's growing pain. It's, you know, you live and you learn. It's, it's life lessons. Right. And I say, you know, okay, can we have um, less expensive life lessons? Yeah. Um, girl, yes. Why every, why, why every lesson got to be about a grand? <laughs> lesson one, about a grand. Lesson two. Can any lessons be, that's like when you need something done for the house. It ain't nothing done in your house that's going to be under $500, $600. I don't care what it is. Not in your car going to be back. Then it'd be a little cheaper. I ain't got it like that now for these lessons. But you have to learn how to learn the lesson. You have to learn how to... Failing used to be a curse word to me. You may fail. But it's not failing because you're learning the lesson and you're getting back up and you keep going. But not being at the top of my game or knowing everything I need to know or being the expert, whatever, that's... That's unusual for me because I was the dean's list person and I was the person trying to top performance and I was a per- but now I'm in a different stage in my life and it may not be like that. There's something new, it's something different in my life. Most my definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. I, yeah. It's it's those lessons. And, and I mean, everybody has their, you know, their horror stories, because that's what some of them are, is horror stories. But <laughs> um the most important piece of it is that we've learned from it and we grow from it. Because right. you have some that have gone through those same situations and they're stuck in that moment. They right. didn't move forward in their purpose and passion. They did not achieve their dreams. And they're still looking at the vision board from six years ago that they haven't been able to check anything off of. And right. so, you know, being able to say, you know, I went through it and I moved past it. I can deal with it. Right, right. And that's what my books are about. It's, it's kind of hard sometimes because anything I write about is a testimony. So I'm probably living a testimony right now, but that's hard. That's hard when your testimony is not, oh yeah, I hopped on my jet. I went shopping and, and had dinner in Italy. I, you know, I'm cruising all around the world. Okay. It's a little different when your testimony is a little, you know, real and it's out there to help somebody and change lives. 
So I'm probably in a living testimony right now, but it, it shows people, I'm not telling you something that I've learned, heard, read, was taught about in school, learned at home. No, I'm, ta- I'm telling you things about, about my life, secrets that I've revealed in my book that I never revealed to anybody. Only four people in my life knew some of the things I went through when I was 19, 20, 21. And so it's, it's real. And it's like, this is the life that God has chose for me. So I have to live the best way I can and get somebody else to go through and to realize that God can use me even in my brokenness, that I'm going to bless people in my brokenness. So it's, it's, it's my life. And that's it. A hundred percent real. <laughs> that's all we can give. Listen, give you no more, no less. That's all right. I can give. Right. And sometimes it may be 20%. That, that's why I'm at 20% today. I'm not hundred percent, but, but when you always want to be in control and you always think you got to have things go, no, 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 this will humble you. You're like, you know what? Mm-mm. You're not in control and you need to sit down somewhere and, and I'm going to handle it for you. <laughs> that speaks volumes. Okay. <laughs> you are never in control. <laughs> right, right. That's so hard. Oh my gosh. That's so hard. I don't know my next step. Even now I'm like, oh, what's my next step? What am I going to do? I- yeah, I just have to go with the flow and just plan as much as I can. Yes, indeed. So it's been an amazing conversation, guys. You guys, I know a lot of you, like I said, you're getting ready to rev up for 2019. You're going and you're ready to say those new year, new me posts. You're ready to go and talk about who you cutting off from your time. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what's coming, guys. I already know. I am prepared. (laughs) Right. But I also want you to start preparing today for the future that you want and the dreams that you are trying to achieve. So with that being said, Vanessa, I want you to let everybody know how they can find your books um, and where they can connect with you on social media. Okay. So this is, um, let me see how you can see her. Okay. She got a face facelift. This is her new cover. So this is my first book. Pushing Through the Pain to Pursue Your Purpose. Pushing Through the Pain to Pursue Your Purpose. This is awesome. This is the book that I revealed the secrets in. And I'm always living up to that title. I'm thinking I've already lived to, up to the title, but I'm always living that title every day because I'm always pushing through. So this is the second book that I released when I retired from the government at 46. Preparing Today for the Life You Want Tomorrow, Eight Steps to Pursue Your Dreams. So this is what we talk about today. And this is a collage of people living their dreams. And these are eight steps in the middle, my footprints when I went to the beach a couple years ago, before I even knew I was going to do this book. So eight means new beginning. This title is eight, eight, eight words. And my first title is eight words. So if you want to um, order either one of these books, because I do believe that these books will help you with your new beginning, you can go to VanessaFleetson.com. Or you can go to Amazon.com. So definitely head on over there, get the books, give me a great review. Reviews matter. Um, but if you want to order on my site, you can do that as well. It's only twelve ninety five. Only twelve people spend that in a day on lattes. No offense, no. <laughs> but this is life changing, and it will change the life of future generations. So I definitely put my blood, sweat, and tears into these books to help other people, and I think it's it's going to be a life changer. I definitely agree that it's going to be a life changer because guess what, guys? It is time for us to move to a whole new level. You guys know great things are coming and you have to move towards those things. Sometimes you can't just stay in position and stay in place. So that means some things won't work. Some things may not work, but that's okay. That's why we are here with the Speakeasy Podcast (laughs) to give you guys those behind the scenes steps um, that other people may not be willing to talk about. the, The good, the bad, the ugly, but you know, the necessary in order for you to see your dreams come into play. For those of you that are already speakers and authors, I would love to have you on as a guest. If you go to bit.ly forward slash speakeasy podcast, all lowercase, you can choose a date that works best for you to come and be a guest on the Speakeasy Podcast with me, your host, Alex Denise Pelzer, the voice coach, professional speaker, certified life coach, Amazon bestselling author and podcaster. Guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. Those who are listening over on iTunes, be sure to give us a review. We want to know how this episode mattered to you, how it affected you, and we want to know if you were able to share it out. Share it out. Sharing is caring. (laughs) Share, share, share. (laughs) So we appreciate you guys. Until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya. Bye.